Praise the Lord. We don't have to be afraid, do we? We're going to talk a little bit about a man named Peter today. Appreciate him, his walk. Uh, you know, he was an outspoken one, Peter was. And I know some says, well, man, don't you know he denied the Lord? I said, yes, he did. But how many knows that the Lord was so much concerned about Peter that he paid him a special visit and he asked him if he loved the sheep, if he had loved the lambs, because God hadn't given up on him. You know, a lot of people give up on us, but how many knows God never gives up on us? He loves us. I guess I'm going to pull this train today, I guess. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the 14th chapter, the 28th through 32nd verse, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto the end of the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked under the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they come into the ship, the wind ceased. Now I thought about, you know, it took a lot of courage a lot of times we look at Peter and we say, well, Peter, he sank and all of that. But how many knows it took courage to get out of the boat? I mean, he's sitting in a nice, comfortable boat out here. And there's a, 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 a boisterous a storm going on. And suddenly he looks out and here comes Jesus, just as relaxed. He's just walking on the water. And Peter's looking out there and thinking, some of them said, is that a spirit? You know, I noticed that a lot of the Gospels uh, mentioned Jesus. But only Matthew really began to talk about Peter. He mentions Peter. But here he is. It's, it's a storm going. And I, I'm trying to picture myself. Listen, I'm not afraid of water. But I want to be honest with you. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a great swimmer. I'll be honest with you. I'm about like a good skin diver. I could, I could hit the bottom fast. But I'm not much of staying up when it comes to being on water. And I remember one time, I'll never forget it, I, a Brother uh, Marsh, you remember that little boat he had? It looked like a little deep to me. It wasn't much. And I remember he drove that thing. He, he had a hook on his trailer. And I went to say, hey, because he hadn't unhooked it out of that, uh, that little eye hook. And, man, next thing you know, that thing come up on the bank. And I'm thinking in a few more minutes, we're going to go out in a tremendous lake. And that thing's been drug up on the rock there. And I'll be honest with you, that whole trip was rent for me because <laughs> while everybody else was enjoying their fishing trip, I was constantly looking around to see if we got any water coming on board here because I know I ain't no swimmer. And that thing, when it, when it got way out there, it only came out of the water about that much. And I'll be honest, I was constantly watching that. I thought, mercy sakes, I ain't going to bail out. I, ain't, I know I can't walk on water, but I'm watching this thing very carefully. And about middle of the day, we're, we're going along, and Brother Marsh begins to laugh. Only way he could, you know. And I said, what's so funny? He said, well, I was thinking about how that you said you were saying hey, and I thought you were saying okay. And I drove the, the I was trying to pull that trailer out, and here I drug that boat up on that deck there. And I'll be honest, that whole day, I was a little bit nervous. I'm not going to kid you. But how many knows everything went well? We stayed up, we had a good fishing trip, and everything went well. So I kind of can identify a little bit. Here's Peter in this nice boat, and they're out on this big uh, sea here, Jesus is walking on the water, and all of a sudden, you know, he, uh, Mark and John, as I said, they, they talked about Jesus walking, but Matthew reveals that Peter had a walk with the Lord, and here it says he, by faith and ways that one, Peter literally placed his life. Did you know when he stepped out of that boat, he literally placed his life in Jesus' hand? Now, you ever heard anybody say, I'm walking with the Lord? He was really walking with the Lord. He was on a full-fledged sea when he stepped out of that boat, and he's the only man that I know recorded in history that actually walked on water. Now, we down him a lot. We say, well, he failed, you know, and all that, but he's the only one that had an act of faith that got out and walked with the Lord himself. Now, Peter's act took great courage. It would have, for me, that would have been great courage for me to step out like that how many knows we find ourselves in times dealing with situations that requires great faith? You know, there's been a few cars I had great faith in. 
I mean, to get in, a mercy sake. I mean, put that key in and turn the key. And we always think it's going to start, don't we? How many knows there have been a few times I've got in and I've heard it click, click. I said, oh, oh, this isn't good. We're not going nowhere. We, I, I know there's fire somewhere, but it's not going to start the car. So we put a lot of faith in a lot of things. And, but I want to put my faith in the Lord, don't you? And it requires great faith, courage. And there's a lot of things that we don't know about that are unseen to us. Trusting in the Lord is a way it, it, when there appears no way. How I many knows that? When there seems like there's no way, he's there. And faith believes the impossible, doesn't it? It responds contrary to human reasoning. Now, a lot of people say, that guy's crazy. He's crazy to get out of this boat. But he did. He stepped right out into that water, and he walked toward the Lord. Now, I want to tell you something. These verses reveal a little bit of discernment that Peter had. He struggled in the midst of that sea, and I could hear the disciples. You know, you don't hear them much in the background saying much. They were looking out there, and old Peter, he ste- I can picture him stepping out. And when he stepped out, it was just like a firm foundation. His feet was walking on that water, just like Jesus. He was walking just the way he did. But how many knows in the preceding verses, and, and let me tell you something, the wind didn't just calm because Peter stepped out. It was, I mean, his clothes was getting wet. Those waves were coming up. And Peter, as long as he was looking at the Lord, he was walking just as steadfast. But how many knows, it's like a lot of us. We get to looking around and suddenly Peter realized, man, I, I, thought, I thought before I thought, and thought before I thought, and here I am out in the water. What am I doing? And he took his eyes off the Lord like many of us do. And you know what? We know that he sank. He sank. And you know, listen, he wasn't just a little ways off the bank, folks. Bible says he was three to four miles out. Think of that. I've been 13 miles out, and that was enough to intimidate me. But to think even three to four miles is pretty deep to be in the ocean. And clearly there's a desperate situation here that required more than being able to give as we consider Peter's discernment and we discover his determination. Now his recognition, recognition. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, Come. You know, a lot of them said, it's a spirit. Is that a spirit out there? But Peter was bold enough to say, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. And boy, just as quick as he thought that, he stepped out into the water. Now, Jesus was aware of the dire situation. He had his eyes on Peter. He knew that this was desperate. He knew this was an uncommon thing for a human being to even think about doing, much less the Son of God. And here he is. As he drew near, Jesus spoke words of comfort to his disciples, and Peter recognized it was the Lord as he arrived in the midst of difficulty. Some others have recognized Jesus as well, but only have a count of Peter actually speaking out. The rest of them just sit back and watch. Some would argue there's a, there was a bit of doubt and a reservation in Peter's words, but he was acting plumb on faith. He really was. And he overcame and received the help that he desperately was looking for. Now, we must recognize, church, we must recognize the Lord. We must be willing to admit our lack and recognize his ability to meet our need until we get to the end of ourselves. We actually walk by faith. How many's ever been in a situation you knew it only took God to do something supernatural? I've actually seen him do supernatural things in my own family. And I know only he could have done those things. He could have acted the way he did. Peter answered him and said, Lord, you know, as he said, he bit out of me and he, he received and he stepped out of the safety of that boat. And the Lord bid him to walk on the water. And then suddenly Peter had lost his mind. A lot of thought, he's crazy. That man's just plumb. He's, he's working. At, you ever heard anybody say, ah, oh, they're just working on zeal. How many know sometimes it's the Spirit of God? that gets in you. There's been times, I'll be honest, that uh, he's allowed people to do things that nobody else could do any other way. Did you know zeal will make you act and do things that you couldn't do in your own? I heard stories of cars that fell on people. And because of the desperate situation, there was nobody around to help. They literally grabbed that car and they were able to pick it up. 
unbelievable strength. There was a man that I remember. He was a black gentleman. He had one of them Buick Lex 225s. I don't know if anybody knows how heavy them front ends are and them big motors they had in them. He had a flat tire. And somebody was trying to say, what am I going to do? He said, I ain't got no jack this crazy car. And i got to change this tire. And he looked at one guy and said, how fast are you at putting that tire on? He said, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to lift this car. You put that tire on. He said, there ain't no way. You're crazy. You'll never be able to do that. He said, you get that tire ready. And that guy literally grabbed that Buick Lex 225 and picked it up. That guy jerked that car out, slapped the new one on, just like it was nothing. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to say an unkind word to him. I don't think he, he, he probably wants to put a hurting on you, I would think. But I want to tell you, there's times that we're able to do things. It's beyond our strength. It's beyond us. Just like Brandon was talking a while ago. Here's a pastor, and his son's dead, as far as he knows, goes to the church. And it's beyond him, but he loved the Lord. And he goes home, there's his son playing. I'm telling you, that's God does those things. Some people would think you're crazy. There's people who think I'm crazy because I go to church every Sunday. You'll talk to them. I said, what are you going to do this Sunday? I'm going to attend the house of God. They'll just shake their head. I don't know what you get out of that. I'll tell you what I get out of it. I get strength. I get security. I get peace. I get healing. I get uh, 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 those times when I'm discouraged. I feel his firm hand. That's what I get out of it. You see, Peter, Peter was willing to leave his comfort zone. He was comfortable in that old boat. I can see him. He's just relaxed, you know. He's in that old boat, and they're just going along. And I mean, it's tossing and turning. He sees Jesus, and, and he's sitting there, and suddenly he says, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. Come, Peter. And man, poor Peter thought, there he was. Be about like me. What in the world did I do that for? I'm out here now. But how many knows God does the impossible? How many knows that financially there's been times I needed money? And I'm, t I'm talking about in a bad way. And I remember one time I needed some money. And I was sitting in my car, Brandon. And I looked out to the side of my car and I thought, what is that right there? No, oh, I said, that can't be. Can't be. Reached down, picked it up, and there was $20. Now, I don't know about you, but God's a blessing God. It's not always in a paycheck. There's times God knows your need before you ask. And there it was. There's been times I've got an old jacket. That I hadn't worn in a long time. And reach in there and feel something. Say, what in the world's that? Pull it out and there's a thing of money. That's God. He takes care of us. Uh, you see, it's his responsibility to watch over Peter. It's his responsibility to keep us. But we have a responsibility too, church, uh, to be dedicated to him, uh, to serve him, uh, and to trust him. When he saved us, uh, he didn't just save us to leave us. He keeps us. How many of you had your loved one get sick and you began to pray for him and God heal him miraculously? When the doctor said, there's nothing else we can do, how many knows the great physician can go the next step? He can go that next step. You see, we're challenged as we considered in the walk of faith. We speak faith. There's been times we'll speak faith. And how many knows there's some days our faith is stronger than others? It is. You know, I have, I have an easier time believing for you than I really do sometimes myself. I don't know why that is. You get sick, I can get down and pray and say, Lord, heal their body. Sometimes in my own, I sit there and go, Lord, I don't know why you don't touch this. It just keeps attacking me. But it's easier to have faith for me, for other people, than even myself. But how many knows it, a genuine faith, it'll motivate you. Did you know that? It'll request something that uh, supernatural power of the Lord to come to pass when we see Peter and the faith that he did and the possibility that he stepped out and did what he did, his response. How many knows his response? There comes times when God speaks to us. And then there's a time for you to respond to God. He said, come. Peter went. Quickly. The time, and he, he didn't have time to contemplate. He was already out there. Jesus granted his request. And Peter knew it. Peter was walking just fine in the midst of that sea, trying to um, imagine yourself in a situation 
that you haven't ever experienced before. You, you responded solely in faith. And reasoning could have prevented such an action, but Peter responded to the Lord's call in faith. He just went out. He was convinced that it was safe standing on that water with Jesus than it would be to stay in the boat without Jesus. You ever been somewhere without him? When you wasn't really trusting him like you should? Really wasn't even living for him like you should? It's better to have Jesus on board than it is to be without Jesus on board. How many knows that? I would never encourage careless behavior. It endangers our life. We need to be willing to respond to the Lord. It requires that you abandon human reasoning. And we know it in order to respond in faith. When the Lord calls, we, want to, we must be willing to respond to him, even though a contrary wind is affecting our family. You have to understand and know uh, to walk by faith. The Lord assumes we, uh, the world assumes we lose our mind, but we know that we have our right mind. I didn't have my right mind until I started serving the Lord. That's when I'm, I, I came to my right mind, is serving him. Now, there was a distraction for Peter. Did you know that? First of all, he's walking, and all of a sudden he realizes where he's at. Man, I'm in a boisterous sea here. And he starts looking around. And then, you know, our surroundings will hinder us. Did you know that? There's been times uh, circumstances will cripple us. You ever been there when something that's bigger than you, you didn't know what to do with it? And sometimes we will let what we hear hinder us. I remember one time, a little Brandon, I was getting ready to preach at a church one night. I never will forget it. And they, they were in the back. I hadn't even opened my Bible yet, and I was thinking, mercy's sakes, he's attacking me before I even get a chance to even open up my scripture. And so as I was leaving, I heard Pastor Bailey say to me, he said, Mike, go in Jesus, it's going to be all right. Now, I didn't know what was going on. I'm sitting there thinking, my son has got spinal meningitis, and I'm thinking, he could be paralyzed. I was thinking all these thoughts in my mind, and I'm driving along, and of course my mom's in the car, and of course, you know, you always got Job's comforters with you, you know. She said, well, I had a family relative had that, and they never walked again. I thought, oh, glory, hallelujah. That's what I need, faith with me as I'm going down through there. And I said, well, I'm just going to trust what God said. That's what I'm going to do. I believe that God said it. I heard the man of God say it's going to be all right to go in Jesus. I believe it's going to be all right. So we got there. I remember they were examining Brandon a little bit, and he said, hey, can you put your chin up on your chest? And Brandon, he raised his uh, neck up there, got it on his, on his chest there, and, and the doctor looked at me. He said, you know, I'd hate to do another spinal, uh, you know, on somebody. It's very painful. And I'm sitting there just saying, Lord, just move it. Whatever you got to do, Lord, just fix it. And it wasn't a few minutes later, Brandon did something else that he asked him to do. And miraculously, right then and there, God took care of a situation that had me troubled, and the mother was troubled there. But how many knows, he didn't have spinal meningitis. God healed him right then and there, and he hadn't had any effects from it since, as far as I know. But there's distractions will come. There's things that will try to rock your faith. But how many knows, if you go in Jesus, it's going to be all right. Maybe you're facing something even today. And you said, Lord, I don't even, I don't even know how to face this. I don't even know how to approach it. But how many knows if you go in Jesus, it's going to be all right. He'll take care of you. You see, his focus. you got to get focused sometimes, church. Did you know we're in a, I know we're in a pandemic and all that. I hear this every day. I hear all these stories. And I try to keep my focus on God. I go to the job and I'll tell them, I said, listen. Listen, folks, I'm not trying to downplay this. I'm not trying to say that we're not in a pandemic, as you say. But I want to let you know, God takes care of me. He's going to take care of it all. And we'll just be careful. We'll come through this all right. What are you focusing on today? Or is this your 401k? I've had a few of those. But I have a few insurance policies I signed. I thought I really had something. And, man, after I read the fine print, I throw that thing away. It ain't worth beans. I got earthquake insurance. I thought, you know, for my house, because we were on the fault line there in Kentucky, I thought I had something really good. 
And the guy looked at it and he said, why, did you know it's got to be a certain record before they even cover that? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, it's got to be at least a three or better before they'll cover that. He said, so don't put a lot of stock in that. So there's a lot of things they sign you up for and you think you're real secure. Well, you better read that fine print because it's not as secure as you think it is. But there's one security that I found, and it's in this Word of God. And when I put my name there, and Jesus said he was going to come, and he wrote it down. Somebody asked me one day, have you seen your name there? No, I haven't seen it, but I trust that it'll be there on the day that I arrive. It'll be there because Jesus is not an Indian giver. He takes care of us. What's your focus on today? You see, sometimes we put a lot of tension on our storm. Sometimes we get diverted by family issues. There's a simple truth, and many times we need to be reminded in the midst of trials, in the midst of storms, it's easy to lose focus. But if we start out well, and we trust the Lord by faith, and we hang on, church, and we see the finish line walking toward him as the storm intensifies. We tend to take our eyes off Jesus and the focus on our storms, but we must keep our eyes on him. His ability to walk above the storm enables us to do the same. Yes, it does. Anybody ever had fear grip you? You ever been out in the night? There's been a few times I've been out in the night, and all of a sudden you feel like you hear something. And you turn. Because you think you heard somebody behind you. I remember one time, I'll tell a funny story to old Brandon. He don't mind. He's, he's grown up. He can take it now. But I remember when he was younger, we'd go deer hunting. We'd be out in the woods. I'd go to stop or something. Boom, he about run up over top of me. He was staying close to Dad. He wanted to make sure everything's Okay. And, and I had to laugh about that. Now he goes by himself all the time, mercy sakes. I don't know if I want to get out there sometimes that early in the morning. But it was just comical. I'd feel him all over the top of me. Is everything all right, Dad? Yeah, yeah, son. After you about knocked me down, we're good. We're good. But it's like that. How many knows the enemy will try to put things in our way? He'll try to put doubt upon you. He'll probably he'll tell you you ain't going to make it. You're not going to get through this thing. But how many knows you will get through it? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. You see, Peter lost focus in, in a moment of time. He was in a state of sheer panic. You know, I about drowned my, myself one time. I, my uncle, I had a bad habit about coming to him. I said, Russ River. And I didn't know how deep I was in the water I was in, really, to be honest. I, I had been walking down this, uh, uh, like, rock. It was like shell. And I was walking out there. I dropped down to my knees. And I said, help me. And he'd come running, and I'd start laughing. Well, I didn't realize I'd wandered out a little bit further than I thought. And I seen this thing said, boats, be careful, boats. And I went, reached out, and suddenly that water got colder than that. And I realized I was way deeper than I'd ever anticipated. I was in trouble. I'd went down two times, almost a third. There were some swimmers to the right realized, that boy's in trouble. He's not playing games. He's serious. They started swimming toward me. And my uncle had a raft. If he would have just thought and thrown that raft out to me, I'd been all right, but he reached his hand out. And boy, when he did, I about drowned us both. We, I'm telling you, it was bad. Finally, that goes to show you playing wolf. That's a dangerous little game there. But anyway, we finally got to the bank. He had a look upon him that I'd never seen before. He was white as a sheet i never seen him that way before. He said, let's get in the car. Let's go home. He said, I've had about enough. He said, that was good enough for me. I mean, I scared him. I, I, I was scared myself. I don't mind telling you. My knees were shaking and beating together. And, uh, but he was really shook. You know, he said, let's go home. We're done. And I was glad. But I was more thankful that God protected me. And I was here. Hallelujah. But I don't get around and play what Games like that no more. I don't. I, I'm serious. I stay in the swimming pool. That's better off, you know. At least they can find me when I go under. But how many knows? How many knows when you're walking by faith? Faith is your foundation. You see, when Peter stepped out, he was on Jesus' foundation. He was doing fine. But then when he began to look around at everything else going on, and we're, we're guilty of that sometimes, we'll get to looking at everything around us and suddenly realize 
we're in a storm of our life. But how many knows that that faith will bear us up? Jesus will enable us to stand the storms of time. And I am sure what Peter envisioned when he stepped on that boat, and it wasn't a lack of faith, but it was his failure to keep his eyes on Jesus. And the reason that faith is essential, in fact, you'll eventually face a situation where faith is all you have. There's a song we sing, and I think Roger Payton actually was the one that sung it first, but it said, when Jesus is all that you have, he's all that you need. You don't need nothing else. You need Jesus. That's who you need. You see, I pray that we have the ability to maintain our focus and come through triumphant. Peter failed the test. We, we all know that. Thankfully, his failure wasn't final. It wasn't final. Yeah, he made some mistakes. He proved in a time of weakness. But the Lord didn't leave Peter to perish. It was his lack of faith. And although he failed that test, Peter was delivered. For the Lord reached out to him and saved him. Now, this is just my commentary. Okay? I haven't found it in the Bible anywhere. But I don't believe Jesus got Peter on his back and said, Come on, Peter. Let's get back to the boat. I believe they walked back to that boat hand in hand. I believe he was walking with the Lord. And that's just my opinion. Can't prove it. But I believe that. I believe that Jesus walked back to the boat with the Lord. Now, in a rescue, when Jesus rescued us, and he's rescued me many times, he has. He's delivered. He's delivered my family. He's kept me safe from auto accidents. I could go on and on about the things that the Lord has done for me. But I want to say this to discuss here. I hope we realize in ourselves that there is circumstances that we need to increase our faith. We respond to the need. I remember a day that, you know, we were drowning in the sea of sin. And we called out to the Lord. And by His marvelous grace, the Lord saved us out of the depths of despair. There have been many occasions throughout Christian journeys when the Lord reached out in the moment of despair, lifting up, up above the turmoil that surrounded them. How many knows He's always faithful? Is He not? Is there anybody here who can say, well, He had been faithful to me. He's been faithful to me, and more so. You see, Peter got a little rebuke from the Lord, didn't he? You know, sometimes he does kind of snap us on the wrist a little bit. Son, you should have been paying better attention. You should have been watching a little bit better. But it was a, a rebuke that the Lord said to him. It was a loving rebuke. He wasn't harsh to Peter. But he said, you know, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And Peter cried out in faith, and the Lord responded. But the lack of his initial faith brought a loving rebuke from the Lord. There's never a reason for fear or doubt. Peter was in a peril. Even though it appeared that way, Peter wanted to trust him in every situation, regardless of how hopeless it seems in your life. He wanted to appear of the lessons in faith. He would eventually possess great faith. We know that. How many knows when he finally preached that sermon, there was 3,000 souls saved. If Peter hadn't got back in the foe, hadn't got things right, that sermon would have never been preached. But there were 3,000 souls were converted under Peter's preaching. See, the Lord will use moments of weakness and failure to teach us valuable lessons in faith. Have we ever been guilty of doubt and fear? I know I've experienced the Lord's love and rebuke in my life. I have. Faith teaching me I have nothing to fear in Him. He's never failed me in the past. And I know he never will in the future. Sadly, like Peter, I'm often a slow learner. There have been a few times I've had to learn a few uh, lessons. How many knows that college of hard knocks? Yeah, college of hard knocks will teach you a few things. Now, when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased, everything calmed. And the Lord, with Peter, brought him safely to the, to the boat. He allowed him to rest in grace. How many is resting in grace today? Oh, Oh, I rest in it every day. I'm thankful for it. You see, he had ability to calm the storm and now allow us a place of rest. We can't comprehend the help and the hope available to us in Christ. The storm you face is intense. It is. But the Lord will bring a calm to it if you'll just trust him. If you'll just reach out your hand. He can calm the storm that rages 
uh, provides peace in our life. And you can endure. If you're in say today, maybe there's somebody here, you come in and you've heard about the Lord, and you've heard a lot of good things, you've read, but you've never really experienced Him for yourself. I want to tell you here in a few minutes, we're going to open this altar up. You have an opportunity to know the Lord for yourself. Peter was rescued by the Lord. Do you need rescuing today? Sure you do. We all do. I believe that the Lord is with us here this morning. I believe he gave this message to, for us to have confidence in him. He won't let us down. He will not. Sister Crystal, come and give us a song. And We all know that this is the altar call that come. And if you're not saved, maybe you don't want to come by yourself. Why don't you come up amongst us and we got it divided. There's plenty of space up here. The social distance, as they say, we don't have to social distance from the Lord, thank God. But if we'll come and pray, when you're done praying, we'll consider that our dismissal this morning. I appreciate the Lord. I'm thankful that He is our comfort. I'm thankful that He is our rock. I'm thankful that He's our anchor, most of all, in His precious name. Why don't we come and we open this altar?
Troubled sea. 